So check it out. Make sure you tune into this. It's called Beer 30. It's a new, brand new thing of my own invention, and it's gonna be awesome. Sitting down with my friend Russell, talking about cars, garage rehab, the show, you name it. Watch it. I'll drink. What else, millennials? Almost overshot my landing. Careful with the overshooting. Yeah, don't want to do that. Well, welcome everybody to the first of many installments of what I'm going to call uh, Beer 30. So what is Beer 30? Beer 30 is, it might be 30 minutes, it might be five, it might be three hours. It's just going to be whatever I decide to talk about and however many beers I have. We might get into some really good subjects or we may just uh, tell you that uh, everything here today is boring and nothing fun's happening. <laughs> <laughs> like that ever happens. But wouldn't that then be, be beer 35 or beer 36 or beer 60? It's, it's more like a thing, man. You got to get into this. I know you don't drink alcohol, but you can call it energy 30 for yourself or whatever. But it's like beer 30. That's when we relax. That's when oh. we're having some fun. Let's talk about the amount of BS I have to put up with back here building these cars and the amount of BS I have to put up up there running the companies and the amount of BS I have to put up with the people on the other side of the camera, you know, and just, I put up with a lot of shit. Yeah, and you're probably the only one who has to deal with any shit. Well, I'm pretty sure everybody you just mentioned might have to deal with a little bit of triple R shit. Check this out, you're absolutely wrong. In my environment, shit rolls uphill. It always comes to me. What's up everybody, I'm Russell. Oh, that's right. <laughs> they don't even know. Check this out. So, um, you know, Russell uh, came on board and started doing garage rehab with me. And Russell basically does for buildings and, uh, and uh, construction what I do for cars. Change so, my mind a lot? Yeah. Make lots of money and little investment. Take credit for everything the other guys do. I do exactly what you do. Exactly. <laughs> but no, here's this super cool thing. Russell is now on Fast and Loud. I've said it here first, you just learned it. It's going down for real. Welcome to the team, man. Hey man, I appreciate it. Dude, this is a kick-ass environment. We have now the best team of automotive builders on the planet. I'll put my team up against anyone. Consider that a call out. Any shop in the world, we got 30 days and a budget and a car. I guarantee you, you can't beat us. No matter what the car, no matter what the budget, period. How would, you, how would you rate that? Like, how would you judge a situation like Creativity, that? Creativity, authenticity, uh, functionality, uh, a lot of lees. Right. All the lees. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, I can't brag on the guys that uh, build the cars back here enough. Uh, Jason and his crew are absolutely unbelievable. And this season, you're going to see us really in the limelight. I'm proud of all the cars yeah. we've built. Three days. Three days, you're going to get to see the first one, which happens to be boom. You're getting to see it now. None of that hiding stuff. Check it out. 1967 <laughs> Mustang Fastback GT390 car, four speed, ready to rock and roll. It's killer. Now, the millennials on the other side of the camera are actually questioning me on whether it's a 68 or a 67. And I don't really remember if I'd... I think it's a 68. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the so reason you know, why... That's was real TV. No, but that's also, there was a lot of people question. They said, some people say it's 67, some people say it's a 68. And we had to check, but who did we find out from too? Chad McQueen himself. The self. Chad McQueen, Steve McQueen's son, came in here and asked us to not only build a car, but to build it as close to what it was with 1968 technology. And then I was like, eh, you know, that's cool, but can you make it cooler? And he goes, yeah, we'll shut down the city. I said, San Francisco? Nobody's done that one. People have built the car, or as close as they could get it. We actually not only found a car that we could build in the time frame that needed. Actually, we probably, anybody else would have taken six months with the way that car looked when we first got it. People use modern stuff, try to tune it up. This car we built, 31 days, and like Richard said, on the streets of San Francisco, the same one Steve McQueen drove on. Flying. With Chad McQueen going through every detail. 
unbelievable. It was really cool. Beat so you're going to get to see that in three days. Uh, the car is uh, going to be available, and it's going to be pretty cool what we're going to do about it. And uh, everybody almost on the entire planet has an ability to own this car. So stay tuned for more of that when I get it all locked down and get the lawyers involved and the networks involved and all the people that I got to get permission from because as much fun as it seems, it's a lot of business here. It's always business. And that's why I had to bring in Russell because he is basically the muscle. He gets it done, right? And, you know, bringing Russell in was, was a key factor for this new season. Uh, a whole lot different dynamic in the energy here. A lot of things getting handled that allow me to focus on uh, getting other business done and, and other shows done. And we've got a lot of things cooking. We've built a, a big giant thing called Monkey Yard out here you're going to learn about. Uh, we've added on a monkey trap. Hopefully soon enough we're going to be adding another 10,000 square feet. It's going to be pretty cool. Well, uh, the kitchen. Oh, yeah, we did a remodel on the kitchen. That was Russell's first job here. Richard likes to cook, for those of you who don't know. He doesn't spend all his time buffing his jewelry or doing his hair. He actually loves to cook. I'm actually a pretty accomplished chef. And we put in a state-of-the-art decor kitchen in there that is unbelievable. So I'm thinking maybe I do this beer 30 thing, and if you guys like it enough, maybe I'll do like a, a cooking with Richard. Something like that. I don't know. Cook it. Can we call it dicing with Dick? Whew, that could be a little dicey. <laughs> I just don't know, you know. But actually, I was thinking about doing some cooking stuff with maybe Daphne because, uh, you know, I learned oh, a lot of yeah. my cooking skills from Daphne. And, uh, you know, being kids growing up in the 70s, me and Daphne learned to cook because, well, out of necessity to eat, uh, my stepmother at the time could screw up toast. She couldn't do that. No. Hmm. Now, was there questions you guys? Uh... Well, wait a second. We haven't covered everything. We, we got... New show coming out, oh, and it's going to be days. a long run, guys and gals. Check this out. I know that we were getting upset with these short runs, you know, eight episodes, six episodes. This run's going to be like 14 episodes, so a little over three months. We're the fast and loud. We're shoving it right into your living room while you're shoving beers down your gullet. It's going to be awesome. We're building some unbelievable cars. The bullet car was absolutely fun. The, the fun in it was getting to go do it. We had a stunt driver, Chris Forsberg, come in, and he's a drift champion. Uh, they let him drive the bullet car. I wanted to do it, but they claimed insurance reasons. Well, there you go. Uh, we got the Hell Scout coming. Whole different take on an international scout. You're going to love it. We've got, uh, we've got some uh, race cars, uh, old dirt track cars. We've got some uh, period correct uh, trucks. Um, golly, what? You'll have to just watch. Let me just tell you that. Because there's no way you can express the impact of what this season's going to be. With the amount of hours and the cars you found and what these guys were able to do with it, I'm a fan first. So to be sitting here around these cars and this kind of stuff and even this guy, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. unbelievable. Watch. So new season. Russell's on board. Uh, we're going to have more garage <laughs> rehab and fast and loud even after that. Mm -hmm. I know there's been rumors of our demise, but... Uh, Thanks to you guys and gals out there and following the social. We're growing like crazy. Uh, you're always welcome to come out here. Oh, yeah. Uh, Gas Monkey's got a monkey yard. You can hang out, have an energy drink or a water. Sorry, I can't give you beer. Uh, but, uh, you know, come by. We're always open. What else do we got to cover? We got new season. Still be doing, because that was one of the questions people wanted to know. Now that we're doing this, would we be doing garage rehab? We love to help other people. And if we can get out there and do that, absolutely, we'll be doing that also and fit that in our schedule. We got a bunch of stuff coming out. Look for us at SEMA, too. Even though that's a little far away, Richard might have teased a little something with that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to have some fun there. But let's talk about what we got going on in an automotive uh, television genre yeah. right now. Uh, the automotive motorcycle lifestyle genre. Sure. Um, I'm seeing a, a divergence from... Uh, where it was when I got into it. It was, it was, we were doing cool stuff and we were having fun and we were, we were introducing the family element to it. Uh, yeah, that's actual work going on. We don't have a little crew of minions that come in here and build the cars after the fact. We actually build these cars. So, I'd actually like to see little minions building cars here. I, I would too, but at the end Drink of the day. Drink enough of those, you will. I'm fixing to need another one. <laughs> I mean, we didn't tell them how many beers happen on Beer 30. It can be one or 20. Beers 30. So yeah, so when you got started, you're starting to see. So what I'm starting to see now is that the quality of the shows aren't where I feel that Fast and Loud is, uh, and they're getting so far apart from each other. I like to see more competition yeah. in, in this. I'd, I'd like to see, you know, uh, build-offs against uh, other other. 
garages, other shops, uh, challenges, you know, whether it's uh, racing or, or building or a combination of both or what have you. I want to I wanna see us get all mixed in the mix. I mean, sure, they're competition yeah. and uh, what have you, but at the same time, there's you need that to foster the whole environment. You, you can't gauge your competition and you can't grow if you don't have and you don't know what's out there. Just like the big three car companies, right? If there wasn't Ford, there wouldn't, Chevy wouldn't be pushed and Dodge wouldn't be pushed. Same thing here with us and, and the other people out there who are super talented people, but their builds aren't gonna be as good if your builds aren't as good and thus so having builds off was the way. But let me tell you something that you don't know about because I've, I've done the, uh, the build off with the motorcycle build off and yep, we've done uh, right. the mega races and stuff like that. Well, I love our big three, you know, Ford, Dodd and Chevy, right? Yeah. And so, but I am going to call you out on this, guys. Y'all are sissies, or your marketing departments are sissies, or somebody's not willing to be a badass. Because I pitched a show just a while back where there's a Chevy team, there's a Dodge team, and there's a Ford team. Each of those teams builds something that has to do X things. And we go out there and we make it happen. And every single one of y'all big three were too sissy to do it. The only one that was sort of involved was my good friend Tim Comiscus at Dodge. And he was willing to do it, but he moved on to another spot and it kind of fell apart. But I challenged the big three to give me the same type cars and the same type categories. Let's build three teams and let's do something badass. Hell yeah, that would be awesome. You're called out. You're called out, big three. Yeah. Detroit, are you listening? That's fans. You guys are going to have to chime in on that. You want to see that? You want us to see us take the big three and push them out there and see what we can build out of them? Oh, I guarantee you we can kill it. And, and, and there's Chevy fans and Dodge fans and Ford fans and, and what have you. Let's have a little rivalry. Let's have a little fun. Let's have a little competition back in it, not a bunch of numbers crunchers, what I call cubicle pirates, tr crunching numbers and not really doing anything to challenge the other. I mean, even beer commercials have gotten boring. How many times do you got to see like a hand go into a cooler and a hand come out of the cooler, some nondescript whatever? What happened to the cool shit like uh, the Schlitz Malt Liquor Bull or Spuds McKenzie or... You know, yeah, that's changed. Everyone's gotten so safe. They're all so safe and like sissy like the marketing department's afraid they're going to like, you know, make somebody else angry or whatever. I mean, what's going to come after you? The SPCA is going to come after you for using Spuds McKenzie? He's like a bazillion dollar dog. I heard he bought an island and he's like hanging out. No, I think that was mini me. Oh, yeah. You got that guy. You got. Uh... What about the frogs? Yeah. What happened to the frogs? But wiser or. Yeah, whatever. I don't even know. Yeah, see, you're right. Fuck. So, you know, then let's see. I'm really getting into this element. Maybe I should start a podcast. I think a podcast is the way to go. A lot of people want to hear what people who aren't afraid have to say. Yeah, people. a lot of, <laughs> a lot of people don't want to hear what I have to say. And a lot of people don't want me to be able to say what I have to say. And uh, I, I tell you, I'll, I'll preface that with I couldn't be more proud of my team, my family, everybody here at Gas Monkey, Russell included, and what we've accomplished in eight years uh, and what Gas Monkey's become. It was uh, a vision of mine that had basically zero chance of succeeding when we started it. Cause you know, I'm just a dude from Fort Worth that barely got out of high school and I'm gonna start a mammoth worldwide brand and end up being uh, you know, on TV in people's homes every Monday night. Sure, it was a grandiose plan and here we are. And I'm very humbled to be here and I hope I ride this stewardship with uh, a lot of uh, humility. And thanks for everyone that's uh, out there watching, because without you guys and gals, uh, you know, I'd still just be tinkering around in the garage and hoping to sell a T-shirt or build a car for somebody. And now we've got so many things going on that uh, it's, it's crazy. I mean, we've got tequila and energy drinks and bars and restaurants and more stuff coming. More uh, stuff coming. I mean, some really cool stuff coming. And we've got some ideas for some TV shows that are going to blow your mind. Uh, so, uh, you know, make sure you go to discovery.com, drop an email, yep. tell them, you know, do some more Richard shows because it's not me that I'm not going to cram myself down your throat. We just got some really good ideas that I think we can pull in some great talent and really get back to entertaining the living shit yeah. out of everybody watching these shows. It'll be a good time. Which actually brings up something. A lot of people reach out and they want to know how they can have their garage in consideration for garage rehab and, and other garages. So discovery.com backslash discovery.com backslash getting jacked up on way too much on energy discovery.com backslash save my garage fill out all the information and then you'll be able to come in and be in the running to have us 
check out your garages and see what we can do to help? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, I think there's room for a lot of competition. I'd love to have it. I'd love to have a, 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 a competitive build off with Chip Foos or King yeah. Dig or Welder Up or anybody. I'm not sitting here like an asshole saying I'm better than those guys. I'm yeah. saying, Let's have some fun. No, the days of motorcycle madness or the biker build off. Those were what we grew up on Discovery watching. Those were the shows that you wanted to see what happened and you got to see all the real stuff because the time crunch was there and talented people came out of the woodwork from it. We definitely like to see that come back. Yeah, we need to have that come back, but in a good way, not in a mm -hmm. in a in a retro way. I mean, yeah, yeah. You, you see it with the movies now. You see it with TV shows. You see it with cable shows. The the networks are so scared to do anything new that they keep going back. I mean, yeah. how many freaking Marvel movies are we gonna have to watch over stuff that was written in the '60s? You know, because they're afraid to step out and have a new hero. Yeah, but the, or, the, the you good know. side of that is they're redoing Charlie's Angels again. Yeah, with good-looking <laughs> chicks. So it's, there's a good and bad with that. <laughs> yeah. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Hey, watch Discoveries Fast and Loud on Monday night in three days. Russell's here. We built the car. It's over there. And I'm drinking beer. Thank you. Bye-bye. So um, I got a problem, I'm Russell. Empty. Oh, so the 4th of July is coming up. <clears throat> no, no, it passed. We're airing this Friday. Oh, Three days this before. is being pre-recorded because I'm going to be out of town. I'm sorry. So check this out. If you didn't get this in time for 4th of July, it's probably on sale. This is the. It's not online. This is only available here at Gas Monkey headquarters. Period. Is that good? You said it's not online, right? Okay, I'm sorry, but the millennials are again correcting me. It's like I have this group of millennials. You know, in some of the movies we watched in the 70s and 80s when you had to go to the tribe or, or you had to go to the orcs or whatever, and they were like, we don't like what you're doing. We have to approve. You know, that's what the millennials are for me here. But check it out. We got these. They were on sale for the 4th of July. They're going to remain on sale until we run out of them. And uh, they're the gas monk. This is as patriotic as it freaking gets right here. So patriotism. Come down and buy it in the merch store. Maybe they get to see us hanging out. I'm always going out there. Richard's going over. Put a signature on it. Yep. Stuff like that. You know, if it's a good day, maybe I'll hang out and we'll drink a beer or whatever. Wow. Speaking of which. But definitely go on the website because there is a lot of cool stuff on here. Yeah. Oh, I used to have ah, that shirt. And we've got oh, this killer cooler. Right? Uh, all the guys here have signed it. Uh, and gals. Uh, Kirsty and Daphne are on there, I think. And uh, See, gas monkey. What? You're, you're bending my table, them. man. No, that's actually a handle. That's what it's made for. I know normally you have somebody carry your cooler. So what's the odds that I make it? <laughs> About normal. Slam dunk. About normal. <laughs> Slam freaking dunk, guys and gals. Made it. Thanks uh, for picking that up. So check it out. We're going to load this cooler full of cool stuff, all kinds of shirts and hats, all kinds of uh, signed autograph stuff. Uh, everybody signed the outside. And uh, it obviously keeps beer extremely cold. Oh, I like that sound. It's so good when it touches my lips. So I'm going to add a little something that the millennials don't know that I'm doing. Here we go. We're going to add a tour if you come pick it up here. Now, if you're too far to pick it up, we'll ship it to you. But if you want to come here and pick it up, uh, then we'll have to arrange a proper date. And you can come in here and see what goes on and see the guys building and what have you. And we'll walk you around. and. We'll have a little bit of fun. So, uh, how do you we... enter to win to get this? So, check this out. When you come to the store <laughs> to buy some stuff, I mean, this is like Diesel Brothers level shit right here. Yeah, they give when away you trucks. Buy you buy something, away a cooler. then you're entered to win something. I should have thought of this. I mean, I know those diesel guys are freaking just as good as it gets. They're great. They're great. I love Heavy D and uh, Diesel Dave. Muscle. And so, you come here, you buy some stuff, you're entered to win. Then you get to come back, buy some more stuff, plus free stuff, and get some beer, and hang out with Richard Rawlings and Russell. Maybe we should give away a car this year. Oh, I think we give away a car? I would love to go do a home garage. You guys and gals out there, give us some. <coughs> Sorry, it's beer. Uh, you guys and gals out there, give us a little idea on what you think uh -oh. might could be some good. That's energy. That's energy. It smells like lemons. So, um, Tell us what you think. You know, what would be a good contest that would be fun, yeah. yet doable? Absolutely. We go do a home garage, and we get away. You know what? We built that. We built the Cadillac this year. Oh. 
It's oh. slick. It is really slick. Understated coolness. Mm. Yeah, it's rad. And um, it's mint. We've actually built so many cars now that I have a hard time re remembering what all is on. Oh, well, you'll have to watch along with everybody else. So, do you have any questions or not, millennials? Like, what's it like working on fast and loud versus garage rehab? You know, oh, yeah. The difference between working on garage rehab and on fast and loud, I think on garage rehab, because it's such a short time frame. I mean, yeah, getting a car done in 30 days is short, but doing these garages with what Richard has to do on the uh, business end of it and what we have to do on the construction end of it, it is so fast paced. Um, you don't have time to enjoy any of what you do until it's over. So I think between the two of them, uh, the creative aspect is a lot the same, but God, garage rehab is hard. <laughs> garage rehab looks really hard, Russell. Richard wouldn't know because he only <laughs> stops in, in the beginning and the end. <laughs> Russell, this is another question for you. So you're wondering how do you get your beard to look so symmetrical and cool compared to Richard's beard? So excellent observation. I don't number have a beard, one. I have a Thank goatee. You. Right. Well, it's kind of like the starter set. So Having a beard is like having a child. I say that all the time with the amount of care it takes. So you gotta use special shampoo because it's different hair than it's on your head. You have to use conditioner, oil. I trim it every day, I shave every day. It was easier before I had a beard. So because of Richard and, and how his goatee is, I take extra time to make sure mine looks even better. Beards are stupid. So I actually, right before, I was ready to lose the beard, and then uh, we had to film the pilot of Garage Rehab, and I said, look, I'm not attached to the beard, and he's like, no, you gotta keep it. What do you got, Dante? Well, jump from beard trends to car truck trends. How do those impact the build designs at Gas Monkey, or do y'all just kind of rip off the Oh, that's great. When it comes to trends and what's going on in the marketplace, we definitely pay attention because we buy and sell cars and we style cars uh, that we're trying to make money on. But when it comes to what we build here, we kind of try to be cutting edge and different and uh, bring in the style that is uniquely Gas Monkey. Um, I call it monkeying things up. Maybe some people are doing, you know, big giant shifters and white wall tires and what have you. Well, if that's what the car calls for, then that's what I'll do. Uh, one thing that I've tried to get them to do in the new shows is what my guys didn't even know that I do. They think I just come up with an idea and that's the build. I don't. I wait till everybody leaves. I open a cold beer. I put the car in the middle of the shop here and I kind of look at it and I think about what does that car want to be? What does that car, uh, does it want restoration? Does it want resto mod? Does it want hot rod? Does it, does it just need to be sold because it's such a piece of shit? I mean let it talk to you let it breathe let it ferment a little bit see i thought you were staring at the car like that looking at your reflection the whole time have I didn't you seen the you cars were. we start with there's no reflection some of them are very rarely but yeah i mean because the trend setters is is really there's trends so someone's got to start that trend so why not it be gas monkey so and we respect a lot of the other builds that people do but why not take the extra step or give it the gas monkey flavor so as far as trends go try to set them I dig it. What else you got for a super millennial? Speaking of the supreme millennial leader. The millennial Falcon, I got it. <laughs> Speaking of car trends, uh, SEMA's coming up in October. <clears throat> is Gas Monkey going to be participating in it at all? And if so, is the build going to be in the new season? Well, number one, you millennial, it starts in November. November. Yeah, okay. You're not even a car guy. But now. It starts the week of Halloween. It does, actually. You're absolutely right. It's, after, it's the week after Halloween. Which Halloween is the last day of October. Is Gas Monkey have any plans for SEMA? We do have some plans and you're gonna see it on the show. Uh, we've got a build that uh, we're building on all the way through uh, all the episodes. Um, we might have bit off a little more than we can chew, but we're trying to get it done. We got cameras back there right now. We're still filming uh, some of the episodes that you're gonna see this season. So uh, hang on and wait. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. How do you feel about the elephant motor? Oh, it's here you go. There's the question. You got the hell crate versus the elephant. A lot well, of people I have it, it on broad, very reliable authority that the elephant motor is having some problems. I've got some on order. I know a lot of people put some money down, but uh, it's a lot of motor and uh, they're having a little problem keeping them together. So I don't know that the elephant is going to make it to the actual public. Yeah. If they do, trust you, trust me. 
I'll get it first. But I don't think they're going to come. Yeah, if they do, it's unbelievable. I mean, the amount of horsepower they're trying to fit in that platform is just ridiculous. Let's talk about this, though. What am I looking for right now? Here you go. Here's the deal. If you've got something in your yard, your barn, your garage that's worth X amount of dollars and you're willing to sell it for pennies, that's what I'm looking for. But at the end of the day, right now, short bed trucks are killing it. I want an I rock. He wants an I rock. Um, I'm looking for I'm looking for a lot of foreign cars, uh, something out of Italy and Germany, Porsches, Ferraris, Lambos. Uh, we're, we're really starting to get into some of those. Um, we're looking for good starting cars with a good story. Yeah. Uh, that's one thing that I liked about uh, Fast and Loud for a long time, and we kind of got away from it due to time constraints, and I'd like to get back into it. Um, telling the story of the car. Why did it sit in the barn for 35 years or 50 years or what have you? Let's have a little bit of fun. So send us in your car stories. I promise you, Tony Taylor, that's his only job all day long, is he's going through info at gasmonkeygarage.com, and he's looking at every single thing that we get sent in. And we buy probably 20, 30 cars a month that you don't see on the show. Uh, so we're constantly buying, and we love the story. We love the history. And um, we're a little bit better financed than we were before. So I'll buy them. Yeah. Big collections, one car at a time, done math. But the other thing, too, that people may not realize is some of the cars you buy, you sell, and people can buy those on and get notified on the Gas Monkey website, right? Yeah, for sure. Go in uh, to gasmonkeygarage.com, sign up for our newsletter, and you'll be uh, able to see cars we're putting up for sale, things that are floating through the shop. Also, uh, a lot of times after the build airs, I get a lot of people that call or, or email or whatever. Hey, what'd you do with the trim off that car? What'd you do with yeah. the front seats or whatever? So there's a lot of information to be had there uh, through uh, gasmonkeygarage.com. Sign up, get the email. We'll tell you what's happening and what's going on. And uh, besides that, it's just a cool thing to do. And it's, you know, it's the right thing to do. Be a member, gasmonkeygarage.com. I want you. So here's the deal. Have I seen the episode? No, we don't get to see the episodes before they air. Was I there? Did I do it? Do I know that it's freaking cool and badass? Yes, I do. And it is gonna be one of the coolest episodes we've ever done. So you have to watch it. And just like you, I'll be watching it for the first time in its entirety. I've seen some pieces. I was also there. I'm pretty sure I know what's happening. It's unbelievable. Oh, you were more than there. Yeah. You played a very key role. There we go. So check it out, guys and gals. Thank you for your first uh, long form, because um, I'm getting beat up by the millennials for, you know, beer 30. Don't the, forget you can uh, win the cooler here, stuff full of all kinds of cool stuff, and a food? tour. And uh, what? Of, what kind of beer 30 is this? You got no food. You got any I food? I actually just ordered well, like 10 pizzas some, in there. Damn food, man. All right, cool. Hey, cool. thanks for stopping by. GasMonkeyGarage.com, all the Insta things, all the interweb things, Twitters, tweeters, whatever you're into, we're on it, except for some of the things that we're not allowed to be on. Yeah. So check it out. July what 8th. What do you want? I'm trying to, you're going like this, roll it up, and then you want to interrupt me. Okay, so there you go. That's it. It's beer 30, we're finished. July 8th. Yeah, make sure you watch it. Uh -huh.